Greetings in the name of the Most High. Uh, got a little laryngitis or something today. I don't know. It might have been from getting a chill in the studio because I have to... In the studio, even when it's cold out, I have to use the air conditioner to cool off the gear, believe it or not. And so there's just an air conditioner in there that that's all it does. And it might have given me a chill because you have to... Obviously, you don't want to get too cold. And if I didn't have it in there, it would be 85 degrees, even uh, when it's 40 outside. So it's kind of one of those things that, you know, how computers need to be cooled off. You have a room with gear in it, with equipment in it. it you know, oftentimes it needs to be, it's, it's an air-cooled environment, uh, artificially cooled by a, a mini-split air conditioner for the purpose of comfort, obviously, and uh, not letting the gear get too overheated, which would be detrimental as well. So that could have caused it. I'm feeling a little better now that I've been talking for a bit. So here we are. Huh? Yesterday or the two days ago, I tried to do a podcast where I had, the, no, now that's it, Molly, come on. And then you're going to go bark, and that's going to be a way of disturbing me. And this is what happens when I try to do one of these <clears throat> outside the uh, studio, but I've had to do it today because I fixed, the, I fixed the thing that was wrong. I fixed the thing that was wrong with this, and... Um, so this podcast should be good to go because, and then yesterday I did uh, 104 minutes and when I went to uh, bounce it out, it, it interrupted twice and uh, finally I just had to put the WAV file up and piece it together in another program other than Pro Tools and um, finally got up there. It's a very, but it's just been really, uh, Again, the, the air since Halloween fraught with huge magic and sorcery. I know it's hard for people to understand that because you, you kind of have to feel it. You know, you can feel it in the air if you know what it is. And it was huge. Never seen it like that except for when Bill Clinton came to speak at uh, uh, another... And again, a Bill Clinton is backed by a huge amount of people that are in a certain family of sorcery. So, you know, you get this um, amazing, like the atmosphere changes and the leaves and the wind and the, the light, everything changes. And... Um, <clears throat> It changes for us too. In other words, sometimes the Lord will just activate us to do things that we wouldn't norm normally do, almost as a to let them know that we're here or that He's here and He sees everything. And no one can get away with anything. So you've got that going on. Um, and I'm sort of walking here with my. You've got that going on. Uh, with the election, the reason they're traumatized is that they knew that their polling wasn't um, wasn't an accurate, and all the pundits couldn't be completely wrong, and weren't just calling for you know a narrow kind of thing with a victory, a narrow victory, but were calling for some sort of uh, landslide. And people are just not that off, you know what I mean, when they make predictions. Uh, they're just, they could be off, but usually they're not that far off. So they were somewhat traumatized because, you know, all their figures, all their, the work that they've done throughout how many elections, some of these people have done elections for the last 25 years and have kept polling data and, and done everything really the right way for that period of time and uh, have never been shown to be off. They might have lost or won, but usually it was w within their margin of error. Um, 
Some maintained some credibility by calling it a tie, and then, but the way it ended up was not a tie because, again, Romney lost by more than McCain lost, and there was far more enthusiasm for Romney than there was for McCain, even though, admittedly, he was painted right out of the box as some fuddy-duddy old dumb white guy that just wants to uh, give his millionaires and billionaire friends tax breaks or something, whatever the stereotype was that the, the Obama administration uh, campaign created, it stuck. And, and the rules of uh, civility, you know, obviously, um, if you're not going to lie about your record, you know, as Obama does daily, um, and and Romney wouldn't do that. Uh, but if you lie openly and repeatedly, in, in this case, in Obama's case, is because he is a psychopath, you know, basic you know, 101, whereas Mitt Romney still had a sense of civility and a sense of, you know, honor and duty and, you know, some, some moral value. When you're dealing in a, in a, in a, in a street fight like that with, with people that are completely immoral... If you don't find a strategy of, uh, and this goes not just for the election, but this is like a metaphor for the rest of your life, because right now what you have is um, a war. This is World War III. Uh, you know, everyone can have their own opinion. My opinion is America ended in November 6, 2012. Uh, it was shown that there, someone had said there won't be any more elections. Indeed, there wasn't. This was a prearrangement, and it kind of reminded me of the 2004 thing with Bush and Kerry, where, where Kerry stood down on purpose to let Bush win, both of them skull and bones people. Uh, I don't think that was the case in a way with Romney, but I don't think he was even informed as to what was going to happen. But they had, as I told you before, they had made their choice in Obama, and I hoped I was wrong. Because if, I was, if that was correct, that meant that that was the end of America and the end of... Um, <clears throat> Um, you know, the, when you're in a war, when it's, when it's gotten to the point of anything's anything, nobody, nothing matters. You say anything, do anything. And it's bedlam like that. It's, it's chaos. And in, you know, in this case, what's happened is as predicted, as predicted, most of the people, um, who have businesses and, and employees, are firing all their employees and or leaving or closing up their businesses now, as predicted. So the people that voted this way will be unemployed and then the entitlements will be pulled and then they will riot and be put in food lines and martial law and all that. That is a, a fate accompli. It's already done and it's already been planned for by uh, the administration that knows what the reaction will be. He brought gas to 350, 360 a gallon from 187 and claimed that that gas at 187 was a danger to the economy. It was a danger to the special interests that have him there. Ironically, he also serves big oil that's, that he publicly denounces, but privately he supports. Um, and, and has done everything through sorcery, everything through lying, everything through black magic, everything through, through human sacrifice, and, it, you know, you may not see all those things that happen, but what they've learned is you can't oppose him. They, he's worshipped as a god, and he is there to destroy, and he will be successful in destroying it all so that, you know, if there's, you know, people that left Nazi Germany, I suppose, this would be your cue to leave America. Um, those of you who are going to ride it out here and be martyrs, then... Um, yeah, you still have a ways to go because Sharia law, uh, which o Obama is uh, pledged to bring in, he has to bring in kind of in a slower manner. Um, if he can assume dictatorial powers, there wouldn't be an election in 2016. That would give him enough time to let Sharia law become kind of the law of the land. Perhaps after a war, perhaps, you know, who knows the circumstances, but they're, they're going ahead and bringing it in going after the uh, UN Arms Treaty to confiscate all your weapons, which they have to do before something like that. You know, if there's a martial law, unrest, civil unrest, and then Sharia law comes in, people would be willing to accept it in exchange for bread and so forth. 
So that would give you the context for the Christian persecution of being, you know, beheaded for your faith at some point. But now we don't have that in place. Uh, and, uh, you know, people keep looking for things in the Bible. What is in place right now that is uh, biblical or prophetic biblically is the advent of Obamacare being used to uh, implant a chip so that the IRS can easily, which I mentioned yesterday, can easily see which persons uh, have that insurance by scanning them. And this, this is uh, about to be rolled out uh, big time. And a lot of people do it voluntarily because they don't want the hassle of presenting their papers. Internet, interstate checkpoints and checkpoints, as I predicted in 2008, 2009, now here took a couple years, took a couple years, but those, those checkpoints are now being expanded by Homeland Security. And uh, as predicted, they'll be there just like Nazi Germany, just like um, East Germany, just, you know, communist East Germany, uh, Stasi East Germany, and just like uh, Soviet Russia, exactly the same thing of uh, travel restricted by checkpoints by Deutschland or, if you like, Homeland Security. It's a repeat because the Nazi model was something that, say, the Bush family and all these other people helped to fashion it. The people that are, have been in power behind the scenes control the military trade today. And um, that's all they can think. It's a repeat because they're not imaginative. That's, that's just the way it is. It's like spy on everything, put cameras everywhere. Have the NSA powerful uh, in, you know, devices that the NSA have turn that on the people, then put cameras everywhere, which they've done, like in the UK, and then checkpoints for any kind of travel, whether there's a terrorist attack or not. And there's no end to it. And eventually it gets to, you know, murder is where it's going. In other words, we need to cull out the wrong sort of people so that only the right sort of people remain. That is the compromised slave dumbass who is, allows himself to be hypnotized, conformed, passed through to the other side, and is just a sycophantic slave soldier for the Luciferic um, mind-numb robot regime of absolute idiots that uh, aren't worth the, the ground they're walking on. Unfortunately, you have over the majority of people in America are that, which is why America has gone. America is just basically, it's, it was an idea, yes, and it lived, how long it went, uh, let's see, 76 to 1976 would be um, 200 years. And then to, um, and then let's see, uh, you have 86, 96, 2006 is 30 years, so 2030 years. And then another 36, so it's 236 years, 2000, no, 236 years, uh, which will be forgotten, you know, a blip in history. There'll still be some kind of um, corporate thing I suppose this is much like after the French Revolution or something, you know, which, which was a joke because the peasants that did all the, the fighting and dying and the uprising in Paris, um, these were the ones who were cut out of the deal. The Libyans were cut out of the deal. The Egyptians were cut out of the deal by this guy, by this, this reprobate backwards head up his ass president who is a powerful, satanic, sorcerer, um, god, who is also worshipped by many around, like the way that Damien was worshipped, the kid in the omen, very similar. And who people won't oppose legally because they don't want their families hurt. Who has power not only over this guy, and who is trying to expand that power now. And... Um, who is also the, uh, behind him are the super powerful globalists, you know, the sort of uh, Zbigniew Brzezinski, the, you know, and, and, and others, but I mean, he's a public figure. But, and others, the same people that are, you know, Bush and others are behind him. The Bush family is behind Obama. They won't admit it, but it's, he's part and parcel, of, he's, he's the, you know, the guy that's supposed to help bring in this, thing they want, which will be fraught with blood, 
they can't wait to start spilling your blood. I mean, they're just, you know, they want that orgy of blood so bad because it's such a delight. And they waited so long. And the dumbass people won't even know that all the fighting and dying is for their pleasure as a big snuff film. I suppose when when people get that far gone, they, uh, you know, only blood will do, wars and things like that and, and hurting people. And a psychopath, basically, which is what the the... the, the the way it has to go before there's an end final punta point on this thing is that the psychopath um, must dominate and there can be nothing but them. You know, there's no room for anyone moral, They're, you know, or has a conscience. And the goal of the psychopath is always the same. It's to prey upon the non-psychopath, to make them suffer and then offer themselves as a solution. And the delight in that is, is in the loins for the psychopath. I, I don't know how much more clear I could put it. If you wanted to, they didn't stop Adolf Hitler. Um, maybe they should have. Or Joseph Stalin. They won't stop this man. You could argue that there really wasn't a, a Germany or a Europe kind of, you know, I mean, after World War II, it went, you know, socialist and communist. But, I mean, there won't even be, again, there may be a moniker that says America, but there's no, the, 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 refu the, the point of it is gone, is the, the, the whole point. And then the death is the um, spiritual, philosophical, and moral death. You know, there, there could still be a corporate entity called Coca-Cola, you know, a global corporation called Coca-Cola uh, with the name America, with a little logo and a little stars and stripes. But it's got nothing to do with um, what was there originally or what, what was just lost. And um, so, but I've been told, you know, directly and shown that the day of loss was the day objectively history would remember as the loss. And that was the official law where, where God said no. He was definitive. And in every language, in every country, every tradition, every religion, everyone knew that was the day. See what I mean? God speaks when he speaks. He speaks in all languages globally at one moment. So that there's, there's not a group of little Christians over here that go, oh, America's dead already, like we've seen, these little cults. No! It died on November 6th, you know, or 7th, between the two, right at that time in 2012, officially according to God. Because he doesn't speak cryptically here and there that no one gets it. He's not, you know, the author of that kind of confusion. When he moves and he speaks, we all know. It doesn't matter where we come from. And everyone knows this died. Everyone knows Obama took it down. Say what you will about him. He's a man child. He's an empty suit. He's this and that. But he did what he did. He beat the crap out of all of us. And took it. And took the spoil. And now it's a new ball game. Which is why I said there will not be no election in 2016. I mean, they might run, they might for the little slaves and sycophants here, if there are any. Um, <clears throat> you know, I'm not sure what has to happen, but rapidly we are descending into economic chaos. I mean, it's just exactly like you. I said, if this happens, this will happen. Now it's happening. I can't wait. I, I, let me just, uh, you know, this is perverse. But sure, um, when I drive by them in the food line, I'm going to say, own it with a megaphone. This is what you did. Take responsibility. This is your food line that you created. Oh, I'm sorry, your food stamps are gone. Oh, your Medicare and Medicaid is gone. Oh, your pension's gone. Oh, well, gee whiz, what did you do? Gee whiz, what did you do? Own it. Stay in that food line. Enjoy yourselves. God moved, 
and he put them in food lines. Oh, they don't know they're in food lines yet. When I say food lines, I mean, you know, riots, poverty, destroyed cities, burned out husks, the police and the military coming around to arrest people and put them in a, you know, all of that. And they're going to act, look, they always do the same thing. Uh, we're victims. And they're not going to connect up that by, you know, well, we were taken over by, we were beguiled by Obama. Well, I can believe that. But he no longer needs them. He no longer needs them. So the idea of endless unemployment and all these other, you know, goodies that Santa Claus brings to get votes are no longer needed because there's no need of votes anymore. I don't know if I can even impress upon you how dangerous this situation is. I guess until the rivers of blood and all the death that you won't really get it. But that's fine. You'll, you'll get it sooner, sooner or later. It's well-deserved. And uh, I don't think I will... You know, in a sense, <laughs> I have to tell you, I'm on Yahweh's side. I accept his judgment. I accept his judgment. I accept his decision and his movement and the swift thing that happened. And I witness about it because that's what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, the psychopaths. Well, so what you have is um, we've only gone 20 minutes. Oh, that'll be a short one then. And I think that what I'm saying is basically, I think shared by or felt by many people. And, but I think they're kind of in denial, thinking in some way, in some way there's a way um, a way back or that there is some way to deal with what has happened uh, in a, you know, that, that there's a response that we're Americans, we, uh, we come back. And I think the private fears of some citizens, say like a Clint Eastwood, would be, um, you know, hoping that some kind of voice like mine is wrong, obviously, but privately confirming deep in his heart that he won't say to other people, maybe this has happened. You know what I'm saying? The old men probably have that, <clears throat> that feeling. Uh, no, I don't want to see people suffer in their food lines. I'm just saying they ordered it. They wanted to die, so they ordered their deaths. Um, you can't just say they were hypnotized so they were victims. There had to be something that allowed them to be hypnotized. You know, I know, beguiled by sorcery. That's what happened, obviously. That's what also made people sit home and not vote or whatever. But it happened... And the kingdom was taken without a shot, as predicted by Khrushchev, and as predicted by Brother Thomas, the finale, and I'll be talking to him. That's what I got to do is call him up. The finale, I can't do an interview until they fix my studio because a component blew up in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, some During the time of high spiritual warfare, a voltage leak occurred between two components and one blew up. Oh, it never happened before with anyone else, just so that's how I knew it was something, you know, one of those things. Um, it's causing me to switch out components so they're more compatible, I guess, voltage wise. So you have the situation. I think I'll have one more coffee while I'm at it because. 
It's a big day after this. Yeah. Enjoy that sound. <laughs> it's a big day because... I have a whole bunch of mixing to do and things to do, so I'm going to have to be on my toes. <clears throat> I will be having a... Um, what do you call it? A, uh, a huge Nutriblast drink of all kinds of superfoods and nutrients. And then I'll go at it. And, you know, I'll probably be at this all day long. So I thought I would get this <laughs> podcast series out in any way I could. And so I'm still using my iPad, but what's coming today is a new recorder that will give me a better recording than this. But the iPad, what's cool about it is I hit a button and it FTP uploads it to uh, the Podbean site um, right from the iPad by hitting one button. <laughs> How cool is that? So when I need to communicate, this is the fastest way, using the iPad. Okay, so we want to deal with prophecy in the sense that people want to tie it in with the whole global thing and tied in with the, with the, you know, Book of Revelation and Book of Daniel and so forth. And it's not going to ever really line up completely because in a, in a kind of a 3D way, it's going to line up in a multi-layered his, kind of holographic way. Meaning that, you know, yesterday, today, and tomorrow is all kind of like one thing. You'll know it when it, you know, when this thing is over, you'll know it. Um, over the past 30 years they've been putting people in the military that would go along back in the 80s they would question in the 90s they had questionnaires for soldiers would you fire on American citizens because the day is coming when we need to you know, do the same thing we did in Russia back in the day of the revolutionaries uh, Bill Ayers day, the weather underground they talked about extermination of people that were non-believers once they got the revolution through which they now have that they, t they talked about concentration camps and what are we going to do with the people that won't learn? And the older people, you know, let them die. Somehow find a way to kill them. That's what they've done in China. That's what they've done in Russia. That's what they're going to do here. If anyone objects to being killed, we need to arrest them beforehand. It's that kind of thing. Pre-crime. Tyranny. You know, now the, um, there is nothing to stop it from happening. You can report it to Alex Jones and it won't matter. <laughs> in a way, he's helped them. No, not in a direct way, not in a way that was willful on his part. Just he's helped them to, you know, instill fear into people. The only way you can fight, see, what you're looking at, what, what you saw in Nazi Germany, what you saw in Stalinist Russia, what you saw in Maoist China uh, it was Satanism straight up. It has to be fought with the Word of God. It has to be fought with Jesus Christ. There's no other way to fight it. You think your people are gang stalked now? Everyone's gang stalked. Everyone's a target who doesn't agree. But the administration has enough people who now agree. And again, what was the platform? No God. Abominations like Sodom and Gomorrah and, and human sacrifice via partial birth abortion. Those are the three sacred rights. And that's their, their God. And that's what you've got. And it's the worst situation you could be in. I, I don't know that um, it's, you know, uh, there's always been the third world and third world corruption. And, uh, you know, there's always been, uh, how can I put it, um, you know, uh, satanic um, killings and uh, the drug cartels down south in Mexico. You've got, uh, you know, who are ruling by intimidation. You've got the uh, law enforcement and a lot of people 
tied in with that game as well because there's big money involved. But then again, that's nothing new. You've got unbridled human trafficking and uh, especially trafficking in children, snuff films and all those kind of things going on in an, uh breakneck clip as more and more people develop a taste for those things. And these, when I say the elites now, I'm saying people that are in the club with these people that are in control now, they kind of operate as a cabal. So elites yesterday may not be the elites today. For example, Romney would have been seen as an elite. He didn't have that much money. He had about a, I think he's got about a quarter billion. Um, he's not obviously in their club. Uh, you know, I don't know the details with him. I don't want to, you know, I'm not here to defend or, you know, deny anyone. I think all have had a hand in this. I think it's really sad the uh, amount of pain uh, which is from here on out going to be ratcheted up without any remorse. If you want to see what it's like, look at how the administration, now that they're elected, is partying and having fun, you know, knocking the Republicans and forcing the tax increases and whatnot, while the people are starving and without power in New York. It's not politically expedient anymore for Obama to take a, you know, people believe that, you know, they believe. Not only do they believe the inner circles are worshiping. So when the Bible talks about worshiping the beast, um, you know, we're seeing an example of, you know, a lot of people say it's a precursor, but we're seeing an example of it where these people do worship Obama. They're not being public about it because probably they felt a little silly about it, but this is the one they've been waiting for. Their dream come true of the media and people in the media who are worshiping. They'll, no, they're never going to tell you they're, they're you know, in this all for you Damien thing, you know, this Rosemary's Baby. They're never going to say that. That's what it took for them to be big time journalists. So they were already a liar before they even put one word to print. Just like Obama, in, um, when he was at the Harvard Law Review, um, he never wrote one word in his life. He didn't even write the books that are uh, attributed to him. They were written by others. They were ghostwritten. It's amazing. Um, but now the people must suffer. And I must be a... I told you so voice. They were going to do this all along and now they're going to be doing the dying. And you know the sad thing? As the people are, you know, made more and more anxious by unemployment and, and you know, this encroaching meet the new boss, same as the old boss type of thing, you know, bow down in other words, um, is that this, this is... Um, they won't be spared for bowing down. There's a certain type of person that's desired. Most aren't in America. They need to be disposed of. And, you know, they're going to make it under the color of law a way of disposal. And there's nothing they can't do. There's no, no one or nowhere they can't turn the focus of this machine on and eviscerate. There's no policy, there's no law that stands in the way. There is no military or no body that is a checkpoint. It's over. What do you do? Well... There's nothing for you to do except die. You know, when that day comes, I don't know. But I mean, you should have been prepared already to meet your maker at any time. You know, what through sickness, through, you know, you could have been conscripted into the war. You could have been any kind of thing could happen. You know, a tree could hit you. A lot of people lost their lives from tree branches recently. 
So you, so you should always be ready to, to die. And you should never believe in the world so much that you think this is, this is permanent. I mean, it could go another way where people do prosper for a while and, and the administration says, um, and it's not just that when I say the administration, I mean the global administration. You know, they, they wanted America taken out and they did it in 236 years. And they're very quietly gloating and they're thrilled because they're going to get their new world order. But the new world order is going to be, you, then you've got Israel, <laughs> a little Israel, which, you know, I have, I know people who tout Jesus, oh, Yeshua and this and that. And they call Netanyahu a, a seed of Satan. So, and all the people in Israel are, are serpent seed, you know, just like Adolf Hitler called them. So they're no good. I was just thinking about Israel being surrounded and wouldn't a human heart have compassion for them, want to back them up? No. They got to go down the same way that America did. So I guess they're not serpent seed or Satan would have taken care of his own. But you see, these conspiratorialists are working on the same side as Obama. They're all working together to screw your mind up. So that what you see, you don't, you doubt what you see is reality. Oh, they're very good. They have you, most of you scrambled. You don't know which way is up, which way is down. Uh, this is the time where men's hearts fail from fear. So they've all bowed down in the upper circles. And, then, and whether it's to, you know, Obama or the power or, or the beast or whatever, you know, they're bowing down. And, you know, even Obama himself may not even realize the position he's playing and the role he's playing yet, but more and more as he raises his nose up in the air and disdains the little people, he's doing it. And the little people cheer because they like to be disdained. They want to be spit on. They want to be peed on. You know, and they want to be treated as little people like... You know, the days of Evita Peron in, you know, Argentina. You know, when they get a dictator, they love their dictator and they love to be kept in poverty. In Venezuela, they vote for poverty every time. And their dictator doles out little crumbs and they cheer him on as a big hero while they starve to death. And that's the beautiful satanic ritual that they get off on. That's the gift that keeps on giving in the backwards way. Don't you understand... Don't you see what's happened? Don't you see how it works? It's completely backwards. It's completely, and from day one of your birth has been the same. But certain obstacles had to be moved out of the way. No problem. The United States, no problem, done. So now they're operating on the assumption that the United States is done. They're going to have this little fight over the budget, which is just, in my mind, symbolic. You know, they, they want to confiscate the wealth of anybody and property, if they could. So this is just their way of letting people know that that's next. And, uh, you know, they don't want people living in their own houses. The people in this administration want them living in houses assigned to them by the government, provided that they allow themselves to be hypnotized and worship the beast. Otherwise, they should be killed. And that's, they may not be able to conduct that kind of program right now, but that's what's in their hearts and in their souls because they belong to Satan. 100%. So that also puts Jay-Z and all the entertainers, all the people that you've given money to for your hip-hop and... They're in the same boat. They worship the beast. They are owned by Satan, period. Whether they think or not, Jay-Z is a slave. He's not a free man. He's just a sycophant, an idiot. Dumbass. A servant of his own death. Oh, I mean, 
you know, because when this happens, there won't be anyone to buy his dumbass records. Which the lyrics are, um, you know, uh, I guess they appeal to the base of people too, you know, people that have a, a second grade education. And his little babe, Beyonce, with her big empire. These are the elites. Too bad she's dead. Too bad she's twice dead. And your Oprah's and your CBS and your ABC and your corporations and all your people on the board, they've all taken of this fruit because they wanted fame. Everyone said, oh, Jay-Z really pulled himself up by the bootstraps. No, he didn't. Just like Obama said, he had help. But the kind of help he meant symbolically is another kind of help. I suppose it was always going to come to this because all the people I know that are even semi, you know, like your Christian radio stations and things like that, they've all um, bowed down to the beast. Yet they tout this Christian, and if you say something, oh, you're being hateful and judgmental. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm just saying that's my gift. I can see that. I'm just saying what's there so that you can repent. It's actually I'm giving you a gift. I make no judgment. You know, if you live and die, it's, uh, it's up to you. You live and die your own life. When you die, what, whatever which way you are, whether you're in Satan or in Christ, fine. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. You're not offending me by being in Satan. It's important for me to state the way things are. I'm just thinking about all the musicians and the Christian thing playing at the churches who sold out to Satan so they could play at a church, which is basically all of them. I mean, don't you ever look in the mirror and wonder, you know, am I going to go to hell? I mean, do you believe? And the, the answer is, they don't believe the rhetoric in the Bible, obviously. They don't really have faith. It's just that's where they can go to be stars, so they're going to do it. And it's required of them to conform, which in this case means bowing down to the beast, which has always meant passing through to the other side, which will always mean being connected to the thing that, that Yahweh considers the second death. You know, and there are degrees. I mean, obviously, you know, each one is an individual. There's no one rule. I mean, has someone lost their salvation by um, accepting the uh, world's gift and giving themselves over to it and giving themselves away to the satanic? Have they then reached the second death? I, no man can say where a person is with God. That's up between him and God. But in general, the rule, the structure of what I just said is 100% true, and no one, but no one, but no one has ever challenged me on it, and they never will, because they're scared to death. They're scared to death to mention it because they don't have any faith. Oh, yes, but they all say they're Christians. Ha, 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 what a joke. <clears throat> you would think that a Christian would have some modicum of courage. Turns out they're the most cowardly of all. So this whole thing that's going on, and I don't know how long it'll take, obviously, for Sharia law to become the law of the land. That would take some time. I don't think it'll get done by 2019. But you can see that if it keeps going the way it's going, eventually all those things that you see, the worship of the beast, being killed for your testimony of Jesus, you know what I mean, enemies of the state would be people that don't go along with this situation. Um, you can see that how... You know, especially with a world war or something, you know, big um, that would enforce kind of a martial law and a kind of rote conformity across the board, that, um, oh no, they'll line up for crumbs. Um, where they used to get, no, they won't repent. When they go to the food line, they'll beg for crumbs where they used to get food stamps. They won't be giving my food stamps back. They'll, want those, oh, oh, they'll bow down for crumbs. And when it comes down to no crumbs, they'll bow down just for the sake of bowing down. They'll bow down for any, any way they can bow down. 
they'll do it because they feel like that's going to lead to some kind of comfort because daddy will take care of them, mommy will take care of them. So they're going to bow down regardless of what you take away from them. And they will then become the minions that hunt and report on people that won't conform to the beast, who won't bow down to the beast, who won't take the chip, who, who will, at any one rebelling, will be reported on by these people that are bowing down. Yeah, they're going to be the eyes and ears of the global police force. The police force is just policing to see whose soul belongs to Yahweh. If so, then they need to attack. That's all that's actually going on. That's, there's nothing else going on. It all comes down to the soul of the individual and who it belongs to. And that's what all this fighting is all about and all the political rankling is all about and all the fight right now in Congress is all about <clears throat> and all the wars are all about. It's all about you know, turning the NSA and their big thing on public, you know, citizens. Find out, well, what makes them tick? Do they worship government? Yes, well, then they're okay. You know, and, and you know, they must worship the state. And do, will they do what they're told? Yes. Will they report on their neighbors? Yes. Will they turn the uh, guns on the, their own people if they're in the military? Uh, absolutely, they'll shoot them all. Okay, perfect. So what, what is this leading to? And the answer is, well, obviously, it's leading to the kind of tyranny that you see in the Bible and um, the kind of tyranny that you saw in, in Soviet Russia, which is more the norm, the kind of tyranny you see under, under you know, the, the great conquests of Genghis Khan and Alexander the Great and, you know, the way of the world from the beginning of time, you know, has been dictatorialism, bowing down to Caesar. If you're not going to bow down to Caesar, the Roman soldier will just run you through with his sword, Period. Or throw you to the lions. And, you know, man demands to be worshipped. And if you won't worship man, i.e. conformity, then um, you will be enemy. So when I say the Christian world is all bowed down to the beast, that's what they did. They are man worshippers. And um, if you're not going to be part of their family, they won't let you on their airwaves. And, they, you know, you won't be... You know, well, they actually, they can't stop you from if, if you, the Yahweh puts you there. And I'm sure there's a few that are pure hearts. But in general, most of the people I've met in the church system are not pure hearts. They just don't like the other side. So they're a member of that club, and they're still Satanists. And they think they're saved. And they don't even know what they're talking about. They don't, I mean, you're saved, but you so quickly sell your soul. You so quickly give your soul away for, for trinkets and crumbs. And then you say you're saved because you're what? You're part of the Christian milieu. That's ridiculous. Of course, that's hilarious. So you have all these people, millions and millions, running around thinking they're saved where the enemy is, is realizing that they have completely screwed themselves and is getting off on, on it endlessly. And they just love to take these hypocrites and rub their noses in it. And um, unfortunately, these will be just like they don't have any convictions about anything else. When it comes time to renounce Jesus, they will easily do it. Maybe not all of them. Maybe a few will wake up by then. But in the main, they will become the tattletales on the other ones who won't renounce their faith. And it's just going to go like that to the end, to the end, to the end, because that's human nature. That's the reason people need salvation. Because of that kind of behavior, that kind of propensity to do those kind of evil things is why people need, you know, and now we have the lawless one in charge and there is no law that applies. So, you know, Katie bar the door. They've done everything they want to do. Um, <clears throat> Obama can, Obamacare was just a mass conformity thing. It's got nothing to do with, when I say conformity, I mean to conform you to the religion of the state. You know, 
So, you know, that is your end-all and be-all, and that's what you have to have in your heart, and that's what I mean by conformity. Um, that conformity is that whatever the kind of the spiritual law of the land is, you know, when in Rome, that you do as the Romans, that's conformity, okay? That's what I mean by that word. Um, you know, if you like, it means conforming to, you know, the satanic, if you like. Uh, that That's what that word means. I've had people in churches actually complain that... Uh, you know, I wasn't really getting it, not really conforming to the law of the land. And I'm like, what, you mean conforming to Jesus is not good enough? You got it, partner. We want a little more out of you. Well, that little more, um, that line, by the way, would cancel my salvation. <laughs> you think we're all going to hell? All of us here, all this thousands of people in this church? You gotta be kidding. All right? Same thing. So it's all like smoke and mirrors. It's like the Matrix. It's all one big menagerie. Everything, nothing means what it says. It's all basically behind the little mask is this thing about getting your soul. It all comes down to that, folks. There is nothing else going on. You targeted individuals out there. Now you see that you're not the only one targeted. Am I right? Didn't I tell you that this whole thing was going to broaden? so that everyone's targeted, and you can help them now because you can tell them what's happening. They're being spied on. People are beaming things at them. <laughs> I only laugh because I've been aware of this since I was, I don't know, about 15 or so. You know, and I'm glad I'm not alone, and people are reacting to it now. And, yeah, they'll use their, their high-tech stuff, but the high-tech... See, you're, you're putting high-tech too high up on the list. Beyond the high-tech is the spirit of these people that would actually spy on a person, target, say, a, a woman in her apartment, uh, break, continually break in there, and eventually, you know, what, get... Uh, have some sexual encounters going on and film it and put it on the Internet. I don't, you know, whatever it is. I've, I've, I've known people that were... Um, Gang stalked, and one wound up in the hospital with a with a with a cut on her leg, and then that got infected and she died. But before she died, they were in her. She moved to a new apartment, thinking she was getting away from it. And no sooner did she move in that they started putting holes in the wall, mo moving items out of clothing items around, stealing her uh, panties, and then putting them back in in, in, a, in a different place so she would figure out that she was being watched. And, you know, this was going on. She was complaining about it, about putting, you know, she felt there were cameras and surveillance on her. She felt she knew the guy that was doing it. And then and then she has some mystery, Ill, you know, she get, has a gash on her leg and then dies in the hospital. That doesn't, you know. I mean, that was, that was classic, right? Classic. And, you know, um... And she felt the people in the hospital were in on it as well. And uh, so what really caused them all to operate in, a, in such a coordinated manner? And why would they come into her house and move her panties around and her put, you know, like she felt, felt there was a hole in the wall that wasn't there or something. She felt there was a camera in it. And, you know, some other things that she reported. Uh, along with just, uh, she was a, uh, uh, she became a greeter at Costco or, or Sam's Club, one of those. And that was a good job for her. She liked that job, and she was doing that job fine. But you see, it just, things weren't okay. And then she had a dog. I couldn't really intervene much, but I mean, this was all, this was all coming, you know, the information daily she was reporting. Her name was Mary. And she was reporting and reporting and reporting it to me. But before we could intervene or do anything, you know, she was dead. And her daughter had to be adopted. We actually said we would take her daughter in if she couldn't find anyone else. And she went with family, with extended family. And I can only think that maybe she's targeted too. But what was Mary? Mary was a lamb. <laughs> Mary, you know, and what was her, you know, 
what, who, who'd she belong to? Jesus. And so who was targeting her? Well, satan people under the satanic spirit being controlled remotely by others somewhere else. What kind of things were they doing? Harassing her psychologically so that she would, you know, flip out, that, that she had no privacy, that, you know, wherever she went, they would break into her place and move things and do things and just suddenly stalk her and harass her. And it just it kept getting worse and worse, like they were turning up into a knob. And what happened? She got a cut on her leg and went to the hospital and died. It got infected. Oh, no, it's not, you know, it, it's, yes, she was sacrificed. So what was the whole deal of the gang stalking? It led to human sacrifice. She's with the Lord. Her faith was strong. I prayed with her quite a bit. She's with the Lord. But that was just one incident in 2004, I believe it was. You know, just to show you that I understand what, you know, a lot of you think that it's just about harassment and maybe trying to get you to commit suicide or, no, it, it, it's like having a disease, electronic harassment and gang stalking, and it will get worse and worse. You know, the people would say, well, the end goal isn't usually death. It's just, a, you know, it's like a parasite on a host. No, it's not. The end goal is death. You know, but first to cause as much human misery as possible, to make people unable to sleep, to, to, to drive them out of their mind, and then monitor them through cameras. Because they get off on it. And then if they, if, you know, um, and eventually to wear them down until they're, you know, institutionalized, they break down in sickness, whatever. And then many of them don't survive. So it's, um, you know, being harassed to death. Well, now this whole Stasi technique of, Harassing people has gone global. <clears throat> no, I still get them, you know, um, you know, the transmissions. And it's always the same thing, you know, uh, degrade, humiliate, um, get you to hate yourself. You know, and what does Satan do? You're no good, you're lousy, nobody, you know, you have no respect, whatever, it goes on and on like that until you finally, if you agree with him, it's, it's the same voice. You're right, I'm a piece of crap. I don't deserve anything. I should just, you know, and then they'll come to you with an offer at some point. How would you like to get out of being this kind of targeted individual victim type? And come along with us, and then you can be a perpetrator. Okay. Then your life is suddenly good, isn't it? What would you rather be, the one on the other end of that uh, microwave or the, you know? So that's, you know, it's, it's an ongoing thing like that. And it's, um, God has somehow arranged it all to be like that, but it all gets down to the individual. The individual, the soul. If it belongs to the world, then you're conformed to the world. If it belongs to Christ, you're conformed to Christ. It's that simple, folks. Your solution of salvation, you Christian musical artists, <laughs> your um, solution is still Christ. Claiming you have him and getting all filled with uh, your own spirits and your own being high on it um, as a prelude to getting together and, 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 and worshiping the beast is, um, let me put it this way. If you're a father and your kid does bad things but he's honest with you, you're going to punish him but you're going to be fair. If you got another kid who does all the same bad things, but he lies to you about it, the wrath is going to be far more severe than on the kid that was being honest. You bet there's something really wrong with this one. We have to now, on top of disciplining him for what he's done wrong, catch him, show him that he didn't get away with it, and then deal with the spirit of lying that's in him. 
it's a lot more of a problem, isn't it? And that's what you have here. Most people lying about salvation because they're lying about the other thing. Um, they all lie about it. Everyone acts like it doesn't exist. That's the devil's greatest trick. He doesn't exist. That's what you're talking about is total bullshit. You know, it doesn't exist. Anyway, back to the geopolitics of the situation of what happened. Because what happened is historically significant in that this had to happen to pave the way for the globalist regime so that there could then be eventually this dueling um, spiritual realities. The Antichrist on the one hand, and uh, whether you think it's the Mahdi or the Obama's the prelude, which he is and, and you know, very well could be. But you're dealing with signs and wonders and sorcery that we've never really seen before. And it's only going to get so much so that it's like you people will literally bow to their knees when he walks by eventually. He or someone else, but I mean when a man, a figure of a man, they will get to their knees and start weeping. He is their hope. And even though they've taken the food stamps away and all that, they will weep for a couple of crumbs because this is finally their day of salvation. When you see that, you're going to be horrified. You're going to be horrified to see these people bowing down to the most evil, to the darkest evil. And they, 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 look, they practice Santeria. They practice all kinds of witchcraft. They do things even though it's going to bring them to their hell and demise. They do it anyway. The poor people. The poor uneducated peasants. Without them, this thing could never take place. They're banking on that ignorance, on that, on that you know, familial witchcraft over generations that goes on and keeps towns impoverished. You know, you got a lot of those towns in Mexico, a lot of these towns in Africa, a lot of these towns in various third world countries. Countries that could have been very rich, but it was the witchcraft that kept them down and the dictators and the warlords. It's all connected. Actually, I'm not sad about it. You know, a lot of people, maybe they're weeping. Well, most people in this country, they watch television, so they don't know what's happened. They don't realize it's over. They don't, they know, they're still going along like there's some kind of, like their opinion matters. I'm like, didn't anyone tell you that what happened? You were... It's like 9-11, remember 9-1-1, uh, You know, that was an inside job and all that. And the people just create a myth about it because they want to work. The, the same people that create a myth about that are going to bow down to the beast. They're going to, and, you know, meet the new boss, same as the old boss. It's the same, it's, see Frankie, it's the same thing. <laughs> But no, it's not the same thing. It's I, trust me. There's an endpoint coming on this thing. It may the endpoint may just be a lot of us are going to die. You know, there's just going to be a massive war, and you know, there maybe the Obama will turn the you know the, the poor people on the rich people with pitchforks. I don't know. You know, some horrible thing is being set up, and 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 if you don't, you, the, the people are going to be asked to accept more and more and more sacrifice. They'll call it because for the greater good, we have to have sacrifice. People have to, you know, give us all their money and give us all their houses and their property because the federal government's the only thing that can save you. So the government is, and then I look at the government, where's the government? Washington, D.C. Ah, there's Satan's penis right there over the reflecting pool to contact Luciferian gods, Mount Olympus, whatever, we've got... Uh, We've got all the sexual imagery of all those uh, symbols, the apotheosis of Washington, gargoyles, Albert Pike, got a, you know, wonderful, lovely place. Can't wait to go visit there. Absolutely that Washington, D.C. belongs to Satan. There's no other way to look at it unless you're an idiot. 
In other words, you're dumbed down, you were never taught that those symbols, which were so exquisitely laid out, mean something, just like corporate logos do. And what they mean is, um, unless you're Luciferian, you can't trust the situation. You know, they're never going to do right by the people is what it means. So that's, you know, in a sense, there's your enemy there. And then they're, then they're, then they're coming for you with the power of law to make you conform and bow down to their carbon laws or whatever it is they want you to bow down to. Interstate checkpoints. And there's no end to it. It won't end until they get inside you to the soul. That's what, that's what this is all, all of this money being spent. No amount of money in the world. Um, put it this way. They will spend any amount of money to get that soul. No amount of money is too great for that human soul to get, make sure they get all of them. And that they believe in their, in, their, in their mythology that once they have all of them on earth and there's no living souls left, these are all the twice dead, the whole world connected in that way, in that moment they will have their salvation. In other words, let's persecute the living. Kill them because they're stopping us from our salvation. See what I mean? Class warfare, uh, all that kind of warfare, that race warfare, all that that this guy, that Obama gins up, is all Luciferianism. It's all part of the same ethos, the same spirit of Satan. I just wonder if any journalist or anybody really, are you really that ignorant? Or you know what's going on, but you just don't want to say because it's hard for me to believe that most people couldn't figure this out. It really is hard for me to believe. I, I, it's hard for me to believe. Yeah, I should probably not say the BS word. I, I, yeah, I realize I just did that. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, the truth is truth, you know, and sometimes a, a word like that just tends to be the right word rather than pulling my, well, once you start pulling punches, you wind up like the church people, you know, they're just, you know, the white sepulchers that are filthy in the inside. They will never say uh, the S word or the F word or any of those words. They will be perfect in your sight. And then they will be the biggest adorers of 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 Satan, of Lucifer, that there are. They will be the greatest um, soldiers for Satan that there are. The greatest spies for Satan that there are will look perfect on the outside. Um, it's always been the way. The people are, you know, never underestimate how dumb people are. I mean, really, I've talked to people with master's degrees. They're the stupidest people you've ever... It's like, what did they do to you? They basically gave you a lobotomy. The degree means you're a good little slave. Now run along. I don't know. I think um, it's not for me to play God and worry about the numbers. You know, there's going to be a lot of people in pain and poverty and, and, and hurting. And my heart goes out, I'm sorry, but it's not for me to worry about that. Because I say it doesn't mean it's going to happen. I'm simply reporting on what there is in the spirit. And what there is in the spirit usually manifests eventually in the flesh. So that's what you can call a prophetic thing because you're speaking about spiritual things that will manifest in the, in the, in the, in the physical. Um, well, we've seen things manifest. And we've seen the economy go off the cliff and people laying, as soon as the election happened, hundreds of companies started laying people off. And it was reported. What do you think of that? It, the, it was promised this would happen and the people voted anyway. 
they voted for their poverty, as they did in Venezuela. They want people out of work. They think they'll get goodies for it. I, I don't know. But um, it's over. And, and you know, the, the, I always laugh. The blacks and the Hispanics, um, who they think they're going to get something. No, there, there's no country here to get. It's have fun. Who cares? You can't take it with you anyway. <clears throat> And, you know, the thing about the, the black community that keeps voting um, for, for, the, for the progressives, uh, which is just basically tyranny in the end, is that the unemployment rate in black communities is higher than anywhere else and, got, and was made five points higher by this president who they keep voting for. So there's no saving them. They're going to do the same thing they do in Venezuela. They're gonna do, there's no saving them. They're going to just go ahead and vote for poverty, vote for uh, tyranny, and they're going to do it over and over again until it's finally here. Because, you know, and then in the Latin community, you know, there's a lot of people that just like having a dictator. I mean, that's just something they wanted. I don't know where that comes from, maybe from the Pope or something. And that doesn't mean all of them because, I mean, obviously we all have, you know, Friends of all colors and persuasions who have come out into the truth. Because when you're in the truth, you don't see colors. You don't see, you know, it doesn't become about that. Only, only some race baiter guy like Obama needs it for class warfare or race warfare so that he can get control of the people. But, you know, you see this, you know, in the end, he's just a tin pot dictator. But... Like Adolf Hitler, he's getting away with everything, including destroying the United States, so I guess he is pretty successful. Um, I don't know now where I will go. I feel no more affinity here. I feel no love of country. Uh, that, that, that ended for me. And uh, so I don't feel any um, need to... There's nothing to do to save her. Because there's, for me, it's over. For others, I know they're going to try to save the country. That's fine. That's fine. You believe the way you want to believe. This is the way I was shown. I was given this word. I was given this very directly by God. And, it's, and I am not going to go against his word. This is what he has stated. In the history books, there'll be no memory of it. That's what they'd really like. Because you see, it just reflects badly on people. You know, that the world would let the, the USA go out. It makes them look bad. So they're going to try to cover it up. It makes them look like they want tyranny rather than freedom. It makes them look like they want human misery rather than joy. It makes them look like they're, um, they're murderers and psychopaths that just want to kill everybody rather than foster life. It makes them look like they're reprobates who are, whose perverted pleasures are, uh, are uh, king and uh, the rules be damned, especially God. Now, many of you are saying, I don't want to live in a world like that. Well, I'm sorry, you're here. You're here as uh, God's about to activate you and, as, uh, and is activating you right now as a witness to all the things you're seeing. Your prayers are answered. He guides your steps. He will eventually um, unleash the real power of who you are within you. Christ's return within and without. So it's win-win for you. So there's no, no problem. I just have to mention all this. I don't really want to get into, you know, I'm not predicting gloom and doom. I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm just saying in general you can expect to see I don't know how long it would take before there's an a Islamic caliphate here, but I mean, you can eventually expect to see all those things. That, we predicted the uh, Arab Spring. We predicted Libya. We predicted everything we predicted has been 1,000% confirmed. All the results that we predicted have been confirmed. And, and, and the, the, but the big thing I predicted was even if you predict it and confirm it and report on it, 
It's going to keep happening, even though you're 100% accurate in saying uh, the Arab Spring was a joke. It's just the Muslim Brotherhood taking over. Yes. Okay, Obama's in the Muslim Brotherhood. Yes. Obama hates Israel. Yes. I firmly believe, and I make this prediction, that the end will go badly for him. He'll be very successful to a point. No, one, no man will be able to stop him. And then all of a sudden he will come to nothing. And no one will be there to help him. And that's repeated in the book of Daniel and Daniel 8, that theme. And in uh, Daniel 11, the same exact scenario. He will be left alone with no one to help him. All the power will have just fleed from him. Like that power wasn't his anyway. His usefulness will be over and no one will there'll be nobody there to 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 reach out to. It will be a terrible, terrible, tra tragic end. Uh there'll be no one there to see the tragic end either. So there'll be no one there to lament about it. Uh, such is the way with arrogant, um, narcissistic dictator types. They come to a sudden end, usually. The same will be true of Obama. He will come to a sudden end, and no one will worship him. And, that, you know, depending on what happens with the economy, there could be disaffected people as they go, but the last one was General Betraeus, um, Betraeus who um, was going to testify in Benghazi, but suddenly... He had to resign due to um, having a, uh, an alleged affair, apparently, which conveniently makes it so that he doesn't have to testify against the Obama administration on Benghazi, which is what he would have had to have done. Fearing for his reputation as a general, trying to save that part of his legacy, he bowed out because he, he knows that, um, you know, there's some, some bad crap that went down. I, I made a joke. Do you think they're um, having an orgy uh, while watching it in the Situation Room and humping each other, so delighted to watch the deaths? Because they know it's a... Or did they do a human sacrifice to make sure that Obama got the election? It couldn't be like that, right? Did they murder the people for, the, for, for their God? Was it to protect the ideology that Obama got bin Laden and Al-Qaeda was decimated? He's the big strong man. So just ignore it, it never happened. Don't send help because we can't acknowledge that it's going on because supposedly this, is, this sort of thing is over with. Was it to cover up drug running, I mean gun running to the Syrian rebels? Obama funding the Syrian rebels through uh, Ambassador Stevens to Syria? Was it to cover up those facts, which would be illegal, of course, be like Iran-Contra? Was it all of the above? Does it matter if the administration gets people killed? All for you, Damien. If you want me dead, I'll commit suicide because you're the Messiah. <clears throat> no, I don't respect the man. No, of course not. It would be like saying, do I, do I respect um, an Adolf Hitler or Joseph Stalin? It's the same thing, only a nicer package. Do I respect a psychopathic uh, murderer? No. Nope. No. Nope. Whether they kill a lot of people or a few people, no, I don't. I don't. Sorry. I don't tend to respect people that lie every day who pit people against each other, who are just dirty scumbags, you know, who are criminals. I, I have no, you know, who are pathological liars and psychopaths. I tend not to let them in my house. I, I would advise you to do the same if you value having peace and, and uh, if you value your life. No, I tend to, I would not let a scumbag like that around me. That's the president of the United States. I don't care who it is. There is no United States. And there is no president. He's not my president. And there is no more United States. For me, I'm just here in the aftermath of the downfall.
And they can say they're the president or the prime minister or whatever they want to say. I don't, uh, to me, president is now irrelevant. There is no president. There's only like, you know, the figurehead. I'm not fooled by any of this. From here on out, it's simply theater. Oh, it's been that, I know, I know. But I mean, now there's no reason to, to have hope in a country. There's hope in God. But, you know, it's, there's no more disappointment for me because God has spoken. This matter is, is resolved, and now we have to move on to the next one. In a sense, it's easier. You know what I mean? I, I, you know, I found myself, I used to listen to the news intently, and then I started just listening to different mixes on the uh, uh, Sirius radio I've got in the truck. And I had on, uh, you know, some jazz, some Charlie Parker, and I had, you know, then I moved up to some electronica, you know, some uh, chill beats and stuff. And then I went down the scale to some uh, some really amazing alternative sort of alternative new wave rock that's coming out. And it's not really well known, but really intense creativity by 20-somethings uh, on the musical level, putting in some very, very amazing... It's a serious XMU, it's called. I, I don't know what what their programming is, but it's, it's like new alt-rock with a British kind of flair with very interesting melodies and some very interesting new kinds of things. And obviously they're... They have a following because um, it's a station on Sirius Radio. And uh, now I'm kind of bored with rock, bored with metal. But I like that station. It's kind of an alt-rock. It's almost like the next generation of, 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 of what was New Wave before would be something else, but with lots more challenging melody, instrumentation types of things. Almost like a movie soundtrack, some of it. And then, uh, then I listen to classical. And uh, that's, I intend to, um, you know, not be a political commentator on any more of the things of the world, unless it comes to my attention, which is the obvious thing. You know, I heard about Benghazi, and it was, you know, obvious to me. There was, you know, obviously, uh, for whatever reason, it was, a, you know, at le the very least, it was a, a manslaughter. You know, but... Since there's no consequences, there's no reason for me to pay attention to it. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay, you know. Uh, so I've just buried myself in the music, and, you know, there, I may not have a lot to talk about in the future. I mean, spiritual warfare, yes. You know, the studio, when I have that spiritual warfare, like I said, a component got blown up. You know, um, bizarre. I, I've seen it, you know. It it, it happens. Uh, the, the podcast doesn't go up. I'm going to get this one up right away. How should you live? Is that your question? Are you kidding? Just live. Um, have no hope in the world, but have hope in Jesus Christ, and you'll be fine. Dance, sing, enjoy yourselves. You know, there's this really doesn't matter. This where well, the countries come and go. It this doesn't. Matter. Yes, they're gonna, you know, hurt people and everything. But you know, maybe it's good that you get used to what it's like to be in the third world one. Because there'll be people around the world suffering too. Maybe we've had it too easy. You know. But um, you know, people can't bow down to this disgusting excuse of a government, which is a joke. To me, it's a joke. But, you know, if it gets turned on here, if I, I just start laughing and, and go to the other room. It's a job. It's, it's hilarious to watch them. Yesterday, they were, they were reporting the president really wants to have a, you know, he says taxes. This whole tax thing is theater. It is hilarious. Me, I just hope we go off the fiscal cliff. Let's, the, the sooner the better. <laughs> oh, they won't do that. They'll, they'll you know... Obviously, the Republicans will cave in and agree to um, asking the rich for a little more. And then, and then just like in California, they'll ask them for a little more after that. And then a little more. And then they'll chase them out of California. And then the next richest guy, they'll say, well, we need all you've got. 
oh yeah, they're going to do it all. And uh, it really doesn't matter. There's no remedy against it. If you don't like it, the thing to do is just see if you can, you know, get employment overseas or something or try to go somewhere where it's a little bit slower off the cliff. It didn't have to be off the cliff, but look, you, the psychopaths run things, and so they're going to want it to go off the cliff, so it will go off the cliff. No, I don't agree with just waiting around for the end. What are you talking about? Why don't you just grow a garden then and just focus on that? Yeah, these global issues and things, I, I, I don't want anything to do with. I'm sure there's a lot in the news that I can't mention here because I'm ignorant of it today. And I'm going to become a lot more ignorant of it because I really want to be about what the, you know, what the spirit speaks. I want to be about that. And the spirit speaks in lots of multidimensional ways. And I want to try to be an instrument of that. You know, like being joyous despite all that. Forget all this. You know, do you really want to talk about all this anymore? The, over. The United States is gone. The, the tyranny, it's, 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 you know, we're on that path to, um, you know, the typical um, world responses, ignorance and stupidity, and hurting people. Okay? That's my big conspiratorial pr uh, prediction. Ignorance and stupidity and hurting people, okay? Well, oh, by the way, that's been done repeatedly from the beginning of time. Ignorance and stu the people at the top are ignorant and stupid, and they hurt people. They think they're brilliant. And in their brilliance, which is called stupidity by Yahweh, they hurt people. In the Bible, they're called stupid, so they hurt people. And they get all the other stupid people to bow down to them for crumbs because they're really stupid. And then they're the ones who get hurt. And then they vote for them again. In a never-ending array of incredible... I mean, you couldn't even... Where could you go out in the galaxies to explain this to someone? Uh... It, you, you couldn't explain it. They go, well, why would people do that? Why would they have a, want a dictator and have uh, live in poverty rather than be free and have uh, a modicum of wealth? Why would they? What, I don't know. They, that's what they vote for. And they voted for that from the beginning of time. It's due to sorcery and witchcraft and being beguiled and wanting a mommy. It's all tied in with that whole mother goddess thing, you know? Um, and of all these people, the stupidest in the room is Obama. He's, he's, he's absolutely dumb when it comes to anything outside his range of um, political terrorism. Anything outside of that, he's stupid. He, 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 because he lies to himself. He believes his own lies, so he doesn't know anything. He's an empty vessel, an empty chair. Clint had it right. So it's okay. I think this last podcast here puts it to bed, and uh, i got to move on into uh, the next thing. So I'll see you next time. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and may you uh, find the strength and the... And the, and the uh, Great confidence that comes with this. With this whole thing that's happened comes great confidence. Believe me, you're above them. In intellect, in peace, in, um, in joy. And if they've got your joy, if you've got joy, you've got peace, you're dancing, they lose. You win. You're the winner here, not, the, not them. They're going down with the ship. You're on the you're 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 floating in space. You know, um, try not to get too caught up in their dramas. And I'll see you next time.